How's it going, everybody? I'm Brandon with Electrical Specialist, and this is Ask Your Local Electrician. Today, we're going to be continuing the video series about DIY Made Easy, about doing small things around your home electrical-wise to make it a lot safer, save you some money. Today, we're going to be talking about whole house surge protection devices. You know, what is that? Why do we want it? Well, it can save you a lot of money when you have surges from things like lightning, storms. We have our power poles where Maybe a driver ran into a pole. Maybe uh, they're just cutting the line while they're working it out there. That can send surges to your house. You also have surges from inside your house when things like your microwave, your oven, your dryer, big loads get turned on in your house, and they actually send quite a voltage spike through your devices. Those devices with those critical circuits in them, like your TV, garage door opener, refrigerator, they're not made to have those large surges on them. So actually in 2020, the National Electric Code made it a law that you need a whole house surge protection device in your panel. Today, we're gonna to show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that you have a good grounding system. The surge protection device actually works by shedding all the loads onto the ground. So without a good grounding system, your surge protection device won't actually do anything. So that's what we need to find out first is do you have good grounding before you even invest in a surge protection device? So we've already looked at this one. We've got a good ground out here. We've got a bonding bridge. We have a good ground rod. Could be scuffed a little bit because it's painted, but it's all right. We have a ground inside of the water main already, so we know we're good to go. So the first thing you got to figure out before you get started is what kind of protection are you going to use? Are you going to use a 120 volt, a 240 volt protection device? We actually love to use PSP R-Series Vortex. This is a VR1. This is actually a 200,000 amp protection device. It's actually the only one on the market that is actually part of a lightning protection system. So we like to go as big as we can. This is the one we use. Let's put it in. Now that we know what device we're going to use, we can go ahead and get started. So let's get the panel open. You're gonna to have to look at the instructions for each individual surge protection device because each manufacturer has different specs and how they want you to install it to make it work properly. And this one in particular for the R series, they allow you to land it on an existing breaker. We're gonna look for one towards the top, if not at the top to make sure it's protected correctly. Now that we've identified our breaker, we can go ahead and get started. Now we're gonna shut the main off to make sure that there's no power flowing. We can go ahead and open up the panel now at the casing. Still need to be careful. Keep in mind, just because the power's off to the bus bar doesn't mean that the power is still going to the top lug. So watch out for those. Next, we want to identify where we want to put it. In this manufacturer's instructions, it guides us to let us know that the wire needs to be as short as possible without any bends. So we're going to identify the spot we want. Once we've identified the location, we're going to go ahead and knock out the knockout. Let's get Now that we've got the knockout out, we're gonna go ahead and thread the wires to the hole. Now that we're ready to cut the wires and land them, we're gonna hold them up and dry fit them to see how long we can have them without making any bends as the manufacturer suggests. Once we have our length, we're gonna go ahead and cut them and get ready to land them. This is our main panel, so our neutral and our ground are gonna go on the same bar. Make sure to know that though, because if you do have a sub panel, you're gonna wanna make sure they're separated on different bars. Dang, you picked hard ones, huh? Still one those open without double tapping. Now that we've got the neutral and ground landed, we're gonna wanna cut the hots to length.
When you go to land these, they usually find it easier to go ahead and remove the breaker. You'll need to loosen the screws where the original wires are landed and comfortably move in the new wires. Once you've got the wires in tightly, you can go ahead and replace the breaker. Now we're going to go ahead and use some zip ties to make sure that the wire is secured and out of the way so when we install the dead front, it doesn't get smashed. Now we're going to install the dead front. Now that we've got everything installed and everything's good to go, we're going to go ahead and turn on the main and we're good to go. Light is on. Now that everything's installed properly, I can be assured that everything inside as far as my appliances and utilities are safe from any kind of surge. Thank you for watching. Stick with us to the next video. We're going to do some basic plugs and show you how to change them out correctly.